Thank you very much, uh, Shilpa, for those very kind words. Uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, my fellow panel delegates in the dais and all my dear friends here. The session is going to be on market depth. I'm going to just, I mean, throw around some random thoughts. Some of them engaging the regulator's attention right now. Some of them not really on the agenda right now, but certainly it's not too far at a distance, but it's going to be taken up in the agenda very shortly. Those are the kinds of issues that I'm going to just uh, place before you, which I thought the panel also would engage itself in. As Chairman mentioned right at the beginning of this uh, seminar or the conference, we consider these conferences as a very, very important feedback sessions for us from the angle of working on policy issues. So I certainly would look up to each and every session here as a feedback for us to work on the policy issues in coordination with the Reserve Bank of India and the Ministry of Finance. To start with, to quickly go ahead with my thought process, first I would like to start with mutual funds, where Chairman also laid a lot of stress. All of us are aware that the mutual fund industry has been growing at a scorching pace. It has actually grown at a pace of tripling in the last about five to six years. An unprecedented kind of a growth. While I have been talking about this in several of these seminars and conferences, while the SEBI is very happy about this growth, let me also tell you, the industry and the regulator, both of them will have to be aware that these good times should be, should be used for the purpose of actually stabilizing the industry more. The point that I am trying to make is, perhaps the good times won't last too long. The good times would turn into a normal time after some time. Hopefully, if we are going to use these good times to discipline ourselves and to inculcate some good practices, I am sure the entire industry will be able to withstand even if bad times creep in occasionally. So when we look at the growth of the mutual fund industry touching about 20 lakh crore today, there are practices and practices that the mutual fund industry itself will have to introspect, set them right, put them on a track which is going to be sustainable. As I had mentioned some time back, the consolidation of the schemes is something in the works. This is going to be good for the mutual funds market. We don't want misselling to take place in this market at all. When you say that something is a balanced fund, it has to be a truly balanced fund. We don't want the investors to regret later that he went by the nomenclature and he did not find the fund to be balanced at all. This is one example that I am giving. So this is one area where we, the mutual fund industry needs to work on. The second area is the total expense ratio. Today, if you look at the total expense ratio of Indian mutual fund industry, it's far more comfortable, far more favorable compared to many other jurisdictions. We should now examine, with the volumes improving, can we bring down this total expense ratio? Now, why am I mentioning this? I am not trying to eat into the industry's profits. SEBI is not looking at dwindling the industry's profits. The industry's profits will remain where they are because with the volumes improving, the entire profit accent will be on the volumes rather than purely by the margin, going by the margin. So this is a good time where perhaps the industry can really think of trying to shrink its margin, attract more retail investors in their fold and try to gain a little more traction. Two more aspects quickly I will mention. 
One is about benchmarking of returns. There is something about the total return concept that people talk about. There is a general market rate of return people talk about. I think the industry, it's time for the industry to ponder over and look at something which is going to be healthy for the overall development of the industry. So when you compute the market returns, when you benchmark your performance of the market returns, you are deliberately keeping aside the dividend inflows which are coming in. So if we rightfully ask a question to ourselves, should not the dividend inflows be accounted for as a part of the return, I think this is the best time to really consider this question and build it as a part of the overall return measuring mechanism, which will ensure that the industry is going to be healthy, stable, and it's going to remain attractive ever for the retail investor, come what may. Now, we are not thinking that the good times, we are going to just mobilize the investments and then we are going to go home. Now, this is an industry, as the chairman put it, it has perhaps actually offering, it has started offering a semblance of competition to the banking industry, now having grown to one-fifth of the size of the bank deposits in the country. The idea is to actually take this proportion further up and retain that. And if you've got to do that, you've got to have the retail investors in your force. Quickly, the second point that I wanted to mention is about the corporate bond market. There is another market segment which needs a huge amount of work, both from industry as well as the regulators. And when I talk about the industry, I'm talking about the issuers, I'm talking about the investors, I'm talking about the infrastructure providers and the regulators. A number of issues have been touched upon as far as the corporate bond market is concerned. The ambience and environment for the corporate bond markets, perhaps today we are living at a situation where things are at its best. The government's fiscal consolidation efforts are really getting focused. The insolvency uh, mechanism is already working and the government has actually, the central government has actually started borrowing in a very, very reasonable way that it is not really usurping the space which is provided to the private sector. Well, you can tell me that the state governments are taking up a little bit of a space, but then they got to play the role. So when we talk about revitalizing the corporate bond markets, the state governments also have to play a role. So they are also very important and key players here. We had placed about two, three proposals in front of the industry. One is about the electronic book building mechanism. Second is about the private placements. The third is about the reissuances. The reissuances have created a kind of, I would say, I mean the industry has been trying to discuss and debate it. They say that the whole world is turning topsy-turvy with the latest guidelines of SEBI. Let me tell you, if you look at it dispassionately, 12 issuances in a year with 5 issuances being allowed for other type of structured products is not a small number at all. Now you would say, as a non-banking finance company or as a manufacturing company, I should have unlimited opportunities to tap the market. Let me just remind you of one thing. The government, till about 20 years back, as far as the borrowing program is concerned, nothing was really very scientific. In the last about 15 to 20 years, if you look at the government bond market, the government securities market, the number of positive measures that they have brought in by way of streamlining the issuances system, a passive consolidation system, entire market-based transparent way of issuing the debt, that time which is well, used up in allotting the debt has been completely compressed. All these are something which the corporate bond market has to take up. These could appear like bitter medicines right at the beginning, but I am very sure if we are going to take it up, I am very sure the bond market will improve very fast. Now, it's, I would say it's clearly wrong to say that the current guidelines limit the borrowings. The guidelines don't limit the borrowings of the corporate at all. All that the regulators have been telling is that 
you need to reissue you can borrow any number of times that's not a problem but you need to reissue which means the number of debt securities the market would come down paving the way for actually better amount of trading in the secondary market a lot more contribution has to come from the other stakeholders in the market the insurance companies the banks the pension funds which have to invest lot more in the corporate bond market the regulators have to come up with the guidelines which will pave the way for more of these companies to invest in bonds which are not merely triple a they can go down the credit curve this will create a better environment there are smaller issues in the bond market but i don't want to touch upon in a big way one is about valuation many of us if you are going to look at the kind of valuations which are being trotted out today we feel that perhaps it's time that we really look at this particular arena with a magnifying glass and try to set things right it is very very important for the entire industry as a whole and the regulators so streamline the valuation mechanism in a way that the balance sheet reflects actually the truthful the true nature of the assets that you have in your books the other regulators are also looking at using the corporate bonds for the purpose of repo and all that but this is going to take a little more time because some legal amendments are going to be needed quickly moving to the other areas where the regulators have been at work i have had some discussions on commodity derivatives with my fellow panel members here i have had some discussions on reits and interest these are areas i'm sure we are going to go forward initial period will appear like actually we are not moving forward we are very slow but i can assure you there is a lot of dialogue on between all amongst all the regulators things are taking a little more time but certainly we are going to be in the right path we want to be sure as far as these products are concerned number 1 we are actually in for a sustainable market number 2 the retail investors will be drawn into the market in a calibrated way if there is a risk element which is present in the market we don't want the retail investors to come and burn his fingers so we want the markets to mature a little bit and the retail investors to come in of course there are discussions on whether the foreign portfolio investor should be allowed into the commodity derivatives market yes a good amount of discussion is taking place i am sure we will have a positive outcome soon on that given the fact that the dialogue amongst the regulators is at an advanced stage as far as this is concerned on the future side that is the currency futures and interest rate futures one important point that i would like to place before the panel is that while the currency futures has been seeing a huge amount of traction the interest rate futures are not but one thread of commonality which runs between these two products is that the hedging interest is pretty pretty minimal we have a lot of people who are intraday traders we are people who are a little more than intraday traders but then the hedging interest has to be drawn in how are we going to do that is going to be a big challenge both for the industry as well as the regulators by industry i mean the market participants as well as exchanges as well as the regulators we need to come up with suitable prescriptions so that the hedgers also get it now that's going to give a solid edifice for these markets work is on in sebi to allow the mutual funds to hedge their interest rate risk now that itself is going to bring in a substantial amount of interest into the market similarly if we can make some amount of deliverability feature as far as the currency futures are concerned i am sure that will also take off i'll just close with just one more point about the foreign flows into the country there have been murmurs heard about the masala bonds that there has been a going back on the part of the regulator as far as the masala bonds are concerned there are a few things that we need to bear in mind when more of money comes into the country in the form of foreign investments we are contracting some kind of a risk 
It's not merely the currency risk alone. Now, masala bonds don't hold any currency risk as far as the country is concerned. But at the same time, the external liabilities of the country goes up. This is something which we need to bear in mind. And a huge amount of foreign inflows into the country at a time when the currency of the country has been showing a substantial amount of appreciation is something which the regulator is going to be concerned about. Coming from a background of RBI, I can understand the predilections behind RBI's policy framework here and I can only sympathize with them that they need to be very careful as far as allowing the foreign flows into the country are concerned. Yes, we can think of maybe different ways of allowing these flows in under a calibrated system. But all this, we can definitely take a feedback from all of you. Thank you very much.